take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service aboard. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. We will pray and believe that you will make it good unto us. That you will give us the grace. It's as we know that we will run for the grace. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. What I want to do at this time is to put the vision clearly before us, the vision of the Christian life. I'm talking to you on the vision of the Christian life. The vision of the Christian life. That which is set before a man concerning Christianity. Because if you don't know, you will sit idle and do nothing to succeed or to attain to the standards. The vision of the Christian life can also be considered as the standard of the Christian life. The full package demanded, or rather the full package of the Christian life. In Habakkuk chapter 2, I read verse 1 to verse 5. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. 
and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Now, I, it is in my heart to let you know that which is involved in the Christian life so that you will run it well. If you have the vision before you, you will run. Some of you are sitting down. You're sitting down because you think that you have finished the work. It's like somebody writing an exam that didn't read the question paper well. The question paper says, answer seven questions out of ten or let's say answer all questions he didn't know that that the instruction is answer all questions but he was already used to the examination that says answer three out of five. Seven out of ten. So he taught it like that. And went into answering. Now he answered seven out of the ten questions. And felt that he had finished his paper. And sat down. He sat down, relaxed, in fact, and was reading through the seven questions he had answered. Since he had finished, it was while reading through that his eyes went to the other corner there. He discovered that it is not that you should answer seven questions, but answer all. Ah. And I am relaxed. I am relaxed thinking I have done well. Rejoicing that I, I believe I must. This seven question, what come what me? I must pass four. I know I have above average. So, as he sees that the question, the, the examination uh, question are to be answered all, he will begin again. He will begin again with great energy. Since he desires to pass. So that's what we're saying. Some of you feel you have finished the terms of Christianity. And so you sit down. The Lord said, write the vision and make it play upon the devils that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. In this world, you can live as you want to live. 
you can enjoy the mercies of God as you can enjoy. But there's a pointed time that this world will be demanded from you totally. And that's after you have died. That's the appointed time. All this world will be demanded of you in fullness. The vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. When you see some demands in God's word, some commands in God's word, and you don't keep it, you still feel safe. Life is still going on. You're still making some performances. You're still performing signs and wonders. You're still speaking in tongues. Your prayer is still being answered. Although you yourself know, you're not really keeping to all these commandments. You're not. The vision is for an appointed time. This commandment is for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. Everybody say, it will surely come. And it will not tarry. For example, the issue of wearing earrings, rings, putting whatever you want to put on your hair, dressing any way, putting any kind of cloth on your body. Let's take that for example. You do that and it does not affect you. It does not affect your Christianity. It does not affect your prayers. It does not affect your casting out demons. It does not affect your even receiving protection from God. It does not affect the gifts, the performance of the gifts of the Spirit in your life. So, you feel okay. You feel relaxed, but it has an appointed time. When this thing shall count, is at the time when you shall be facing God for judgment. Every word, every title in God's word shall count at that time. You will have to answer all. Oh, so a person can be a drunkard and still be speaking in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Say, I drink wine. This is five percent wine. This is ten percent wine. My life is okay. A person can be smoking and still be living well. Unction, anointing is in him. He is smoking. So, but what about the word of God of unclean practice? That's not it. Of drunkenness. No, it doesn't. It's there, but it's not affecting me. The time it will affect you has not come. The time it will affect you has not come. Or else restitution. You know there's a major restitution that you're keeping silent over it. You're doing nothing over it. And it doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect your performance. It doesn't affect your Christian activity. In fact, God is still speaking to you audibly. But what about the issue of restitution? You know it is restitution. I've not done it. God does not appear to be bothering. The time it will count has not yet come. It, will, it has not come. It will come when you are dying. When you have died and are standing before God, then you will know forever, O oh Lord, thy world is settled in heaven. 
write the vision and make it plain upon tables. You have lie in your life. In fact, you have told some lies. And you are used to telling these lies and nothing appears to happen. You are a minister of the gospel. You tell lies. Nothing appears to happen. You even tell testimonies of lies in the church to other people. And it appears, it, it, as if God ignores that testimony because after telling the testimonies of lies, you say, yes, now I'm going to pray for you. The God of heaven will touch you now. And God is actually touching people. Are you getting it now? God is actually touching people. Ah, it's as if this lie has been, uh, God has used this lie. As if this lie is helpful. Is it that the Holy Ghost gives lies too? The time that lie will come into effect in your life has not come. Has not yet come. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. The vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. For it shall surely come and it shall not tarry. So, but then it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Write the vision and make it plain upon table. Those who are sitting still, when they see the vision, they will run. They will believe God and save their souls. For the just shall live by his faith. Let the vision be set before you. Christian vision. What does God demand of you? So, we are making the vision of the Christian life clear. How to go to heaven? We want to make it clear. The requirements of going to heaven should be made clear so that you will run to enter in. You will strive to enter in. You will not sit still. You will not sit still and think Christianity is as cheap as you're imagining it or as you're seeing it in other people. As you're seeing them do in some churches, you think Christianity is as cheap as that. We want to make the vision clear. In the book of Psalm 15, Psalm 15, verse 1 to verse 5. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Talking about heaven. Who will be in your heaven? Who shall dwell there? I mean, remain there. Not just to visit and come back. That will remain there. Who? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contempt, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to use it, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. 
qualification for heaven. He spells it clearly here. How can someone go to heaven? He must walk uprightly, righteously. The walk of his hands should be the walk of righteousness. Speaking his ways should be ways of truth. Speaking the truth from his heart. He does not back by with his tongue. He does not do evil to his neighbor. He does not do evil to his neighbor. Not take it up a reproach against his neighbor. He does not do harm. Bring reproach to his neighbor. And he has no respect for sinners. Wicked people who are against his God. He does not have fear of man. Fear of man. And I, I drops the righteousness of God because I fear man. No. Whoever that man is, he has no respect of sinners. Yes. But he honored them that fear the Lord. He loves the, the people of God. He loves the righteous people. He swears to his own heart and changeth not. He makes a promise and stands to it. Let your year be year and your nay be nay. Yeah. He that putteth not out his money to usury is always looking for gain among his brethren. Acts of charity he does not know. If I give you this, how much will you give me when you bring back the money? But it's your brother. That's some business you're doing. That's not a business. You're just your common brother that you can show acts of kindness to. You're not ready for that. You all, if he gives you, you must give him return in return. He that put it not for his money, for usury, nor take it reward against the innocent, taking bribe and then to judge against the righteous, to testify against the righteous. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. This is the vision of Christianity. This is the lie of Christianity. Again, chapter Psalm 25, Psalm 25, the Bible is still telling us about this, no, Psalm 24, not 25, Psalm 24, verse 3 to verse 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Talking about heaven. Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hand and a pure heart. Who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity? Following after the wind. Following after idols, he has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully promise. He knows he will not do it, but he's promising you with all himself that he will do it. He knows he will not tell the truth. He's promising you he will tell the truth. He knows he will not go there. But he's promising you earnestly that he will go there. His mouth speaks, but his heart is in a different direction. These people who don't do this will make it to heaven. But in our day, we have people who do this who are Christians. We have people who do this who are in the church. People who live this way who are ministers. Write the vision. 
and make it plain upon tables. The vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end it shall speak and not lie. You will be examined by this world when you die or when the rapture is taking place to see whether you are qualified for the rapture or no. But as for now, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Yes. But I, we sow ties growing up among them. Oh, an enemy has done this. Would you then that we go and root them up? No. Leave them alone. Lest by mistake you root up the, seed, the, the wheat also. Allow them to grow together. But everyone shall be examined by this world. Now we are growing together. Now we are saying we are Christians. But everyone will be examined by this world. Before he enters, before he enters, he shall be examined by this world. Yes. Very important for us to know this so that we don't fall into the judgment of God. So that we don't, we don't become victims of divine condemnation. Now, in Isaiah chapter 33, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 14 to verse 17, the sinners in Zion are afraid fearfulness that surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly he that despised the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stopped his ears from hearing of blood, and shutted his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Pray shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eye shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Now, who will escape her fire? Who will escape the fire of judgment that is coming? It's listed here. The person that will escape fire must walk righteously. Must speak uprightly, righteously. He must despise the, the gains gotten from evil business. The profit gotten from evil contracts. Gains gotten from evil employment. He must despise the salary gained from brewery. The salary of tobacco company. He must despise money coming from evil business, from lying. He must despise those things. He must shake his hand 
from taking bribe. They are forcing bribe into his hand. He said, no, no, no. They are forcing I say, no, no, no. Shake it from taking bribe. The one who wants to avoid hell must stop his ears from hearing of blood, murder, fire, things that will provoke you to fire, to bloodshed, these things, so that you don't come and be rejoicing that people are dying somewhere. No, that should not be your portion. And shut his eyes from seeing evil, where evil is performed. Be it in a film, in a television, uh, be it in a show, it is evil. Something that they are hurting God. Some people are committing immorality, sinning against God, and you are watching it with interest. No, not ready for heaven. You can't escape hell with that. You can't escape hell. But these things can be done and you can still be serving God. Write the vision. Spell the word for them. The vision will speak at the end. At the end it shall speak and not lie. All these things you are listening to in scripture shall all come to pass. They shall all come up to the surface of the water. Although they appear buried now, cast thy bread in water. You will find it on top of the water after many days. That's what he said. Yes, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. Your eyes, because of your purity, because of your righteousness, your eye shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is, a, that is very far off. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 27. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. To 27. The Bible tells us here, say, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the world, that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish the church Christ is presenting to himself in heaven is a glorious church the individuals that will be entering heaven are glorious persons not having spot or wrinkle, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but holy and without blemish. These are the people that are entering heaven, brother. Holy without blemish, sister. These are the people that are entering heaven. But now you're having some play. Jesus Christ comes to play with you. He comes to manifest himself to you. That you're seeing his face in a dream. He loves you. In fact, he carries you to heaven. Very often. Takes you to hell. And plays with you. Makes you happy. The sport is in your body. You're not talking about it. There is a wrinkle in your body. You are not talking about it, but Jesus plays with me. Jesus loves me. Jesus uses me. Jesus says particularly he loves me. In fact, he has told somebody to come and tell me prophetically that he loves me. 
I'm happy and satisfied. Ah, as for that spot, as this scripture, the Bible says we should make it plain for you. Make it clear. Because at the end it shall speak. You will come to discover that although he plays with you, if you remain, that spot remains there, you can't enter heaven. Why, Lord, with all the love and play, he will refer to you, refer you to the vision of Christianity. The vision of Christianity that those who go to heaven don't have spots. Those who go to heaven don't have wrinkles. Those who go to heaven don't have blemish. But you played with me when I had the blemish, waiting that maybe by my love, my love can cleanse you. By drawing you like this, you might not want to be your best for me. You might not become convicted. Where did I point the light at you? Did I not mean that you should see where you are not well dressed? And dress her? Did I not mean so? I gave you people lie. Give you lie. So you can see better. What's the purpose of the mirror? Is to make you see what's wrong to clean up. That's what I was doing that for. But as long as you never comply, you are not coming to heaven. Because those that come to heaven are blameless. Faultless. Without wrinkle. Or any such thing. Again, we see in the book of First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, Bible is telling us there, yes, chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Those things that are not well, that are not right in your life, don't do them. That's the command of God. Those things that, although the interpretation is not clear to you, you are saying so, but it is as if it's 50-50. 50% 50 this thing could be good, 50% it may be evil. Go and follow the 50% that it is good. And abandon the 50% that it is evil. That is to say, lose that thing. Don't endanger yourself. I say, well, I am sure, although I'm not clear. Are you doing it? That's dangerous to your life. Avoid it. Avoid it. Dangerous to your life. Dangerous to your life. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Your body, outward body, physical body, made to be preserved blameless until the coming of Christ. Your soul, your spirit should be preserved blameless to the coming of Christ. Make sure there is no sin in your heart. Make sure no sin is in your heart as you move towards the coming of Christ. Make sure there's no pollution in your body, in your dressing. In the things you put on, make sure that body is not polluted. That you're not putting on that body 
anything that is condemned by God. It should be blameless until the coming of Christ. Again, in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, I read verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Can you see? Present your bodies living sacrifice. Holy. Your body must be holy. Your physical body. And what is the holiness of the body? There is the corruption of the physical body. There are the dressing that the Bible calls dressing of harlots. The attire of harlots. These, if they are in your body, your body is no more holy. Your body is no more holy. Look at it in Proverbs chapter 7. The stain. Proverbs chapter 7. I read verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an hallowed and subtle of her. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abided not in her house. This woman clearly is not holy because. The property of her body is the property of sin. Property of sin. Attire of a hallowed. Some hallowed carry charm about. Charming property. To charm their customers. Or maybe they carry some property to protect the body from evil. Some property. The, the, the presence of the charm in your life, in your stomach, in your hand, in your pocket, in any part of your body has caused your body to become defiled. Your body has become sinful. Any of this condemned property that the scripture speaks against, the wearing of earrings, the wearing of rings, bracelets, chains, the hairdo of the world. Once these are in you, your body ceases to be holy and acceptable unto God. Your body ceases to be holy and acceptable unto God. For believers don't use them. Believers don't bring unnatural things to their hair. Or natural thing to their body, painting their body, using the soap and the cosmetics that will change your skin. You, it, it, that, that renders the body unholy. The body is no more holy. Yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world. Don't the things the people of this world wear, don't follow them to wear it. The character of the people of this world, don't follow them to do it. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. 
What if you are not bothering about this and live as you want and dress as you want and yet you say, I'm a Christian. You may even be a pastor telling others that God doesn't count on this thing. You begin to outline the miracles God has done through you. You begin to tell the prayers God has answered through you. You begin to tell the performances you have made, the revelations and visitations of God in your life. Write the vision nonetheless. Write the standard nonetheless. Make it clear. Make it clear upon tables. The standard is yet for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and never lie. Let the people do whatever they want to do and avoid it. And as they be giving their testimony, but at the end, it shall speak forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Though it tarry, it's tarrying because you're still alive. This world is tarrying. The judgment of this world is tarrying in your life. Why? You're still alive. Though it tarry, wait for it. For it shall surely come to pass. As sure as you will die, this scripture will come to pass. As sure as you will stand before God for judgment, this scripture will come to pass. Then you will know that the word of God is settled in heaven forever. So that's what scripture is letting us know. Hebrews chapter, four, chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. The Bible says 12, 14 of the book of Hebrews. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Live in peace with people. Have good relationship with people. With your wife. With your husband. With your children. With your in-laws. With your neighbors. Follow peace with your work, fellow workers. With your masters, follow peace. With your pastor, with members of your church, follow peace with all men, with believers and sinners, without unholiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. This is the vision. Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. A time is going to come. Because scripture is keeping, I mean, God is keeping the list of those people that you don't talk with. God is keeping their, their record of those people you don't relate with. You have rejected. You are even caused, you have caused a lot of trouble, and they're crying. You're not ready to settle with them. That is there. But you come to church and preach, and there's anointing. You come to do this. You're also very kind in other aspects. People are pressing you because you're very kind-hearted. You give. So people are happy with you, but the other side of you lieth in darkness. Life is going on. At the end, it shall speak. At the end, the implication of that life shall show forth. Write the vision 
and make it plain upon table. The vision is yet for an appointed time. That's why, although you're transgressing the scriptures, things appear to be going well. Though the wicked do evil, and it is well with him, he shall surely be punished. He shall not escape it. But we, he say, what is the reason of writing the vision? That he may run that read it. That's the reason. That he may run that you should respond and react. You should examine yourself in all respect. 360 degrees. Full cycle. Examine yourself. Like the cat. When the cat runs from here to that place, it balances and licks up all the dust. Every part of the body that touched the ground. Because it will not return dead. That you might examine yourself as you relate with me, as you relate with women, as you re relate in your working place, that you may examine yourself. That's the purpose of the vision. Of making you know these things. That is the purpose. Yes. In First Corinthians chapter 9, First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23. Or rather, let's read from verse 20. Let me rather read um, verse 27. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. This is a man that has known the vision. This man, can you see response because of the vision? He has seen, he has read the vision and he's running. He has read the vision of Christianity and is running. See him again in First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 the Bible says ye are witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that believe. We have read the vision of the Christian life. Because we have read, we run. How holily, justly, holily, holy to ensure sin is not in our life. Justly, to ensure as we relate between our neighbors, we are fair and sincere and truthful. Justly and unblameably among you, we ensure nobody is pointing accusing finger at us from any angle. Among you that believe, that know the truth, that you will not say this person is not living well. You who know the truth, not sinners, who are fighting because uh, maybe we preach the gospel against them and we cast out a demon of witchcraft from one of their persons and they say, why did you remove the demon of witchcraft? No, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about believers who know the truth. We want, we live blameless that you will not accuse us. Can you see that? And this has to take place in the family lie, for Eli was condemned for his family. 
your children, his children made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. Eli suffered for it. So, we examine ourselves in every area, making sure that if the family becomes stubborn, our hands are clean. It does not come for our, from our negligence. Yes. Yeah. What about Moses? It was in, a great, in, in administration that the people provoked him to anger until he spoke arrogantly. He failed in administration. We check up in the area of administration that there is no way by our administration that we have sinned against God. For God demands perfect righteousness. Moses had that blemish in administration and it affected him. Yes, we also check that it should not come out of our lack of devotional life. Lack of prayer life has happened to Peter. Watch and pray that ye may not enter into temptation. For Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. But sleep took him over. He was more, he was sleeping and couldn't have the time to pray. I said, this day, before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. So, so, we want, we want to, to also check in our, our personal prayer life, life personal, personal devotional life, life that, that it does not become a loophole from where we will sin against our God. God. The vision of the Christian life in all respect, family, the work of your hand, and your personal relationship with God. Now, I will, I will talk, talk to you on receiving the word that qualifies you for heaven. Receiving the word that qualifies you for heaven. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, we read verse 9. And verse 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Read verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Can you see what then makes you qualify the word? The word of God. Receive this word. Put this word in your heart. Meditate on this word. That is how you will not sin. You will be preserved. That is how to run. That they may run that related. it. That's where you get your energy to keep the commandments of God. The world. It cleanses you. It establishes, establishes you on the way. Make personal effort. To get the word for yourself. In a conference like this, you come there. What are you coming for? It's part of running the race. You're coming for the word that will open your eyes to see the dates in your life so you might cleanse yourself from them. You're coming for the word. When you pick up a book, what are you looking for? You're reading, you're reading, looking for the word that will help to give you the understanding to serve this God better and make it to heaven. When you are listening to recorded message, what are you looking for? You're looking for the word. It is the word that saves. The word, the word that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. It is the word. Therefore, get the word. Get 
the word again i'm talking about receiving the word that will change your life receiving the word that will change your life first peter chapter 2 verse 1 and verse 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 1 and 